Yes. Okay. We are all set for the final presentation in this session, which will be presented by Magdalena Gapsa from the University of Ljubljana. And she's going to talk about how lexicographers evaluate user contributions. So. Yes, it's a very long title. Sorry for that. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in the next minutes, I will be telling you about how lexicographers evaluate uh, users' contribution in the thesaurus of modern Slovene and uh, how they do it in comparison to other users. But before we continue um, like with the findings and with the study, uh, I think that I should summarize some of the key information about the thesaurus for some of you that might not be familiar with it. Um, just for the better understanding. So the version 1.0 of the thesaurus is uh, digitally born uh, and created from pre-existing resources. That means that the initial versions might contain some noise, which means uh, errors, ir irrelevant information. And uh, sometimes it lacks the vital information like sense disambiguation or, um, or part of speech tagging. Therefore, uh, the thesaurus is based on a responsive dictionary model, which includes users into its development and improvement. Uh, users can, for example, suggest their own uh, synonym candidates that they find are lacking in a dictionary. Uh, user suggested synonyms are then displayed immediately in the thesaurus interface, but they are pending lexicographic improvement to include them in the database. Uh, users can also evaluate existing synonym candidates both automatically obtained and added by other users. Um, because there was no large scale study about the content and the relevance of user suggested synonyms, uh, we decided to conduct an uh, evaluation slash user study uh, that would enable both an assessment of the quality of uh, user suggested synonyms uh, but also to identify potential problems users might have with the thesaurus. Um, so we carried out the evaluation of almost uh, 1,000 user-suggested synonyms. It was performed by a total of 42 evaluators representing seven user groups. Um, we also, um, so we include representatives of wider language community, but we also included lexicographers, even though they are a very specific user group. Um, but our goal was to first observe the differences between the specific users, namely lexicographers, and the other users, uh, and then to study those differences and include them in the development of editorial protocols so that we make sure that the latest version of Thesaurus would be consistent with what users actually want and not what lexicographers think that users want uh, in the dictionary. Uh, we actually um, included lexicographers and studied or observed the differences by uh, testing four hypotheses about lexicographers. Um, because we were also expecting lexicographers to reflect the main problems users might have with thesaurus. So I've mentioned that it's almost 1,000, and why not exactly 1,000 uh, examples? Well, the evaluation set was built um, based on the previously prepared list of uh, almost 550 nouns that were uh, collected from various openly available language resources. Um, namely the Thesaurus of Modern Slovene, version 1.0, uh, Slovene WordNet, so the Slovnet, um, Lexical Database for Slovene, Comprehensive Slovenian Hungarian uh, Dictionary, and Database of Nuns uh, labeled with semantic types. Um, we then um, looked for the headword or headword-like units in all those uh, resources. Uh, and once we've complied the list, we've searched for the nouns that had at least one user-suggested synonym in the thesaurus of modern Slovene. Not all of them had it, so only 307 uh, headwords had at least one user-suggested synonym of 550 nouns. Uh, but we then obtained a list of 972 pairs to be evaluated. 
Uh, the pairs were there uh, ordered alphabetically according to headword and um, arranged in a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet was also distributed to the evaluators to, um, to evaluate. That's the portion of how, how the spreadsheet looked like. The evaluators were um, chosen based on previous studies, uh, particularly the typology of potential dic um, dictionary users um, and three typical situations of use. So uh, educational purposes, professional purposes, and leisure activities or free time activities. Uh, we also combined these findings with a study on users' attitudes towards uh, lexicographic novelties uh, introduced by the thesaurus. And that's how we obtained the list of users groups that are most interested uh, in the thesaurus, so also most interested in participating in such evaluation. Um, I've already mentioned why we've included lexicographers, even though they are very specific. So let's move on now to the, to the task that the evaluators had to perform. The task was very simple to answer the question, are the words in the pair synonyms? Uh, however, we decided to let the evaluators choose between four answers instead of just binary, binary yes, no. We also included the conditional yes and not sure, don't know. Um, the conditional yes was supposed to be used when the evaluators had some comments, some thoughts, were not exactly sure if the words are synonym or lacked something. Um, and the not sure, don't know was supposed to be used in cases um, if evaluators were not familiar with one or both of the words in pair, or simply had just couldn't decide what, to, what they would tell. Uh, the guidelines were very, very general, and it was intentional. Uh, we did not provide any definition of synonymy. Uh, we did not provide any examples because we did not want it to influence the answers of the evaluators. We wanted them to rely on their language intuition. Uh, we discouraged them from consulting other language resources like corpora or dictionaries. Uh, we provided the word parts context-free because that's also the experience users get while browsing the thesaurus. Uh, and they had almost unlimited time to answer because for the nearly 1,000 synonym pairs, they had approximately two to three weeks uh, to complete the task. Um, evaluators could also add comments for each pair. The comment was mandatory if they chose the option conditional yes, because we wanted to know what exactly they, they think is lacking, should be included, should not be included, is discussional, etc. Uh, the comments were optional for other answers, um, but they were, of course, very welcomed and, and encouraged. So now, um, as I've mentioned before, we've made some assumptions about lexicographers as evaluators. Uh, before I uh, present our assumptions or hypothesis, um, I should state that we are aware that the hypothesis might appear obvious or counterintuitive at some point. Uh, but we formulated them like that um, to better investigate the differences between lexicographers and other users group. And also because lexicographers has a very crucial role in editorial protocols. So we wanted to make sure that this role is conducted properly and with, in tune with users' needs. Uh, so we assumed that lexicographers would be more consistent as a group within, uh, within a group um, and therefore their interannotator agreement would be higher than in other groups. We also assumed that they will provide more detailed argumentation uh, of their decisions compared to other groups. Uh, we assumed that they will focus on different issues than other evaluators and make statistically different decisions. And uh, that they will also be more reserved in their decision um, and at the same time being more rigorous or critical to include suggestions uh, in the database or evaluate them as relevant, needed, etc. Now, for the data analysis, we've uh, obtained a total of nearly 400, no, 
sorry. <laughs> I'm stressed and the numbers are um, confusing right now. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna read them out loud. Uh, so yes, we've, the, we've obtained uh, this many answers and this many comments, sorry for that. Um, we used the evaluator's uh, answers to calculate the inter annotator agreement and uh, we've used Krippendor's alpha for it because there were some rare cases of missing answers. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely then confusing the numbers in English. Okay, um, yes, so we've also calculated uh, entropy uh, to determine the distribution of the answers. Uh, the evaluator's comments were um, manually categorized into 11 bottom-up categories, such as, for example, limited context or certain sense uh, of the word alternative semantic relation, definition, uh, marked, unknown, unknown word or sense, etc. Uh, some of the categories uh, allowed for further subcategories. So for example, within the category uh, alternative semantic relation, we also had subcategory uh, hyper or hyponymy. Um, and based on this uh, categorized comments, we then performed statistical tests to establish uh, the differences between groups. So let's now move on to how lexicographers performed in this task, because that's the main focus here. Uh, in terms of consistency, our hypothesis was rejected because lexicographers uh, were the least consistent one. Uh, <laughs> Um, I should probably explain what the full inter annotator agreement and so on means. So full means that six out of six uh, evaluators in the group agreed, very high means five out of six, four out of six, total at least high is just combining the three previous numbers. And the moderate inter annotator agreement means that three out of six uh, evaluators agreed. And within the moderate inter annotator agreement category we could also make the category of tight answers, meaning three evaluators choose one answers and the other three choose the other option. Sorry, what is IAA? Uh, inter annotator agreement. Um, it should have been uh, on the previous slide, I think I did not include the, the shortened version. Uh, yes, so as I've mentioned, lexicographers were the least consistent group. They actually scored the second lowest total, at least high inter annotator agreement. Uh, only students performed a little bit lower, I think. Um, they also scored the lowest full inter annotator agreement and uh, the lowest to very high inter annotator agreement. They, however, scored the highest high, so four out of six agreeing. Uh, and the second high is moderate, so three out of six agreeing. Uh, they also had the highest number of tight answers when it was inconclusive what the, the general answer should be. Uh, as for the more detailed argumentation, yes, this was uh, confirmed. Lexicographers definitely provided more information and argumentation. Uh, they they had the most comments in total, uh, so they made the most uh, comments in total. And after the comments were categorized, uh, they were the second most commenting or most categorized group. Um, we don't have time and most uh, importantly the space uh, to show all the numbers. This is uh, a gentle invitation to see the paper. Um, but maybe I should uh, emphasize the the comments scored that were then categorized as other because uh, lexicographers generated around 30 subcategories in the category other, while other groups generated approximately 15 uh, subcategories within the other category. Um, most, um, most frequently observed categories uh, or subcategories within other category in lexicographers were coin synonyms, which would be connected to user's ideolect, so something that is used by one user but not, might, be, might not be widespread or used by other people. For example, uh, 
menstruation called as Red Army. Um, they also generated uh, most common subcategories as uh, terminological correctness. So the case of uh, Mandarin and Clementine, are they the same? Are they different? Is it terminologically correct? Uh, they also uh, spotted more uh, cases of uh, collocations instead of synonyms per se. So example, uh, a granny described as an elderly lady. Um, They've spotted also more of uh, alternative spellings, like parfum, parfum. Uh, they also had more doubts on actual use of the words, so they've explained their concerns if the suggested synonym is actually um, widespread and even present in modern language, like, for example, a joy as a synonym for alcohol. Uh, or uh, they also uh, express doubts on the frequency of use, so if the word is, um, is actually still used or used enough to be included, for example, like expert as a synonym of authority. Um, the hypothesis about focus on different problems um, was, sorry, that's something wrong. No, that's everything fine. Um, this was confirmed because lexicographers uh, indeed identified uh, different potential problems uh, and their decisions were different from other groups. Um, looking at the comment categories and compared to other groups, they most frequently commented on lack of sense disambiguation, uh, reporting more definition or description cases, uh, and made more comments categorized as other. However, they less frequently um, suggested that the user suggestions, suggestions uh, lacked essential sense components, uh, that there were some semantic discrepancies or alternative semantic relations. Uh, they less frequently reported unknown words or opin made less opinion-based comments and commented less on foreign origin of the words. Uh, and what was similar to other groups was uh, reporting cases of incomplete word units uh, and commenting on vocabulary being marked. And um, as the last assumption, so that uh, lexicographers would be more rigorous and reserved, this was confirmed partially. Um, lexicographers definitely show caution um, in incorporating user suggestions as they were suggested, suggested uh, because they made a lot, the most uh, conditional yes comments compared to other groups. Uh, students performed similarly. Uh, however, lexicographers were not rejecting as much material as we thought they would. Um, so that's why this was confirmed only partially. Um, yes. So to summarize, two out of four of our assumptions were confirmed. Uh, lexicographers were the least consistent. We think that it's because uh, we allowed for a non-binary response option instead of a uh, binary one. Uh, and we also think that it's because uh, lexicographers want to provide users with various uh, types of information. That's why they chose the conditional yes answers uh, more often. Uh, lexicographers did identify more potential shortcomings, um, but we think it's because they just are trained to identify more language phenomena than other users and are operating with more precise terminology uh, to describe them. Uh, they also understand possible implications of including such phenomena or excluding them from dictionary. Um, they, however, addressed issues that were less frequently mentioned by other evaluators, like lack of sense discontinuation, for example. Uh, we think that it's because lexicographers are aware of the current limitations of the thesaurus, um, maybe even a little bit biased by previous attempts to ident identify user needs, and that's what they had in mind when they evaluated the data set. Uh, and it turned out that they were the least rigorous group um, so we're just rejecting the, just a small, small portion of the data and um, evaluating this is as unsuitable. We also think that it's because uh, they wanted to provide users with multiple synonym options. 
And uh, our next steps would include the practical implications of the findings. So they should be used as uh, a guide for drafting editorial protocols uh, and um, preparing more detailed guidelines of what a suitable data is, what should we include in the dictionary or in the thesaurus, uh, what additional information should we include. Uh, for example, what semantic uh, information should be included, what labels should be added, what metadata should be um, present. Uh, we will also use these results to prioritize issues that were identified in this study, um, because some of them might have been surprising um, or not exactly in tune of what the previous uh, studies showed that is most problematic. Uh, the results also um, confirm the ongoing need to monitor the community priorities and needs to ensure the, the actual responsiveness of the responsive dictionary model. And uh, I think that that's what I had to say today. I would like to uh, invite you to tomorrow's presentation about Tesaurus of Modern Slovene 2.0, uh, if you are interested in this uh, resource. And yes, um, um, introduce you to stay connected. And if there are any questions or comments, I would be happy to, to take them now. Thank well, you. thank you. Yes, thank you for your presentation. Um, any questions? Thank you for the talk, very interesting. Uh, you collected very many comments. Uh, yes. How did you process them? Manually. All of them were processed manually. It took about two months, I think, or even more. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was a very um, excessive categorization process. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question uh, regarding um, the general guidelines you gave the um, users, the evaluators. Do you think lexicographers would have um, answered differently where they provided with different examples illustrating the synonym pairs? Hmm, that's a very good question, but also a tough one. Um, Maybe, but I think that the problem would be that lexicographers would be the one also designing the more detailed guidelines, I think. So it's hard to say because they could be biased by their own ideas, suggestions, etc. say um, users uh, and or um, these reviewers uh, uh, was they given some some guidelines what the sy synonyms are at all because uh, is synonyms only one word or or uh, sometimes uh, synonym can be phrase uh, uh, this distinction was given to them or not no, uh, we were not distincting, but we were also not excluding multi-word expressions. Uh, if they occurred in the database as suggested by users, they were also included in the evaluation set. But we did not particularly explain to the evaluators that this is a multi-word expression. We were just trying to establish how they would feel about it. Okay, more questions? Well, then I have one note to make. <laughs> I think you are Go very ahead. lucky in Slovenia to have so many people who are willing to contribute to these kind of efforts. Because um, one of the things that, well, I will be talking about later today is about crowdsourcing and gamification in the whole process of making dictionaries. It's, it's really difficult. I mean, there's not many projects doing it already. And I, you already mentioned two months for doing this study that gives some kind of an indication on how much work is required to do this. And I would be very interested in more feedback on how we can solve this if we want to 
yeah, include the user more in the whole process of creating our resources, but it's very important research that you do. And, but very time consuming. So I don't know if you want to say something more about I mean, this? it was time consuming because there were a lot of evaluators, 42 of them in total. Uh, but I think that I should mention that there were a lot of them because uh, all the evaluators we, were paid. Okay, they were paid. Oh, that helps maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's our problem. But you mentioned at the end on the last slide as well that you need to um, keep doing this because you need to keep track of what the users needs are and how they change with respect to your lexical resources. So exactly. Yeah. So it is something to think about. Well, one last thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted us to about process of this uh, evaluation. This is, was kind of a voting because if, if uh, some, uh, uh, for, say 40 evaluators uh, going through some example of, of, of synonym, are they saying yes, no, maybe conditionally, that, that's how it was done, yes, and you're just counting uh, uh, average uh, result, yeah? Yes, uh, we've collected all the informations and then uh, we use the Krippendorf's alpha to calculate the inter-annotator agreement, so how are they, consistent within their own group. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your presentation and yeah, time for lunch, I think. But